Family Medicine in 5. Today we're going to talk about injections, whether you're giving an injection or you're receiving an injection, just a few little tidbits of information that may make it smoother for you. So if you are the nurse giving the injection, there's always five things that we verify before we give it. So it's the five rights is what we call it. The right patient, the right drug, the right dose, the right route, and the right time. We're gonna talk about three different routes today, and so that will help you to understand how to best give an, uh, an injection. So the three different types are intramuscular, we call it an IM shot, subcutaneous, or in a sub-Q, SQ, or intradermal shot. Okay, so first I wanna to talk to you about an intradermal shot. So the reason we would use these is for to place a PPD to check for TB or for allergy. Those are pretty much the only ones we use for. There's a very specific syringe for this called a TB syringe, and it's really teeny. And so you don't wanna use a regular one mil or three mil. This syringe is the only way that you can give 0.1 of a mil. So when we open this up, Whenever you're gonna extract this, you always wanna clean off, anytime you pull any medicine up, you wanna clean off your bottle before you, you do anything. Okay, there we go. And so you turn your bottle upside down, you're gonna inject that needle, and then you can see you're gonna pull up just a very, very small amount. You're gonna pull up 0.1% or 0.1 ml. So when you're ready to inject, you want to clean off the anterior forearm really well. We call it the ventral forearm as well. So three to five seconds, and your last one you go from the inside to the outside. When you're injecting this, you're actually always on to inject it at a five to 15 degree angle. Anytime you inject anything, you want to make sure there's no bubbles into it. We're not going to inject any bubbles into the tissue or into the muscle. So this area that I was at, so make sure your bevel is up. So as you look at your needle, there should be kind of a cutout area. Let me see if I can get that off. And that's the area that should always be facing up on one of these injections. So we go right into the skin, five to 15 degree angle. And remember, we're not very deep. And as we inject it, a little wheel will be created. So, and then you're gonna to wanna to immediately toss this. You, after a needle's been in a patient, you never um, recap it. So you immediately take this and put this over into the sharps container. On this type of injection, you never massage it afterwards. We want that medicine or whatever we've injected just to stay in this one little area. Um, on a TB test, the patient will come back in two to three days. It's very specific between 48 and 72 hours to have this read. Let's talk about um, subcutaneous next. So these would be the injections that are in the subcutaneous tissue. We also call them sub-Q shots. And so things that would go sub-Q would be insulin. Often we use the stomach to give insulin. Um, there's a medicine we use to build bones called prolia that uh, patients have to come into the clinic and have that done, that sub-Q. And the most common ones in our kids are the MMR and the varicella vaccines. Remember, those two vaccines are live vaccines, and so they need to be given correctly. Um, if you do those two vaccines, you should put them in opposite limbs as well. Remember that they can get it the same day, or if they don't get it the same day, they, those two have to be separated by at least 28 days if you're gonna readminister it. Um, there's a few places that you can give them these type of injections. So sub-Q injections go in the stomach, like we said. They go on the back of the arm, the upper outer tricep, or they as well can go into the lateral thigh. The difference is that you, instead of going 90 degrees in, we're gonna go 45 degree angle. Now, we don't wanna go too deep because that would hit the muscle, like an IM injection. And so, in addition to the angle, we also use a smaller needle, so no more than a 5 8 um, length needle. So I'm gonna show you how to do one. Whenever you're drawing up medicines, um, you'll always clean this the bottle, which I already did, and you always want to change needles. So the needle that you draw up with, you want to change the needle out. Now with the TB shot, it's a little bit different because you're just going barely under the skin. But in this, I don't want any hesitation where I'm having a hard time getting into the skin. So the first thing we'll do is we'll drop a little bit of what we're needing. So we're just going to drop one mil. Um, you want to retract until you get right there. Typically, you'll pull your 
your syringe back with how much you want and then when you insert the needle in then it is without resistance so always go back to the exact amount you want I always hit my bottle to make sure there's no bubbles in it now this needle has not been in a patient so I can take it off and immediately drop it into sharps or I can even recap because it hasn't been in a patient and then I always change needles so this is a 25 gauge 5 8 inch needle so we're going to change this out I'm going to give this in the back of the arm here so we're always going to wash off the skin so usually I'll pinch the skin here and remember it's the upper outer um, area so we're going to wash off the skin three to five seconds again sure and then this is at a 45 degree angle so I use my one hand just to take the cap off and just drop the cap again watch your bevel so the top of the needle that has kind of the cutout you want that to always be facing up so 45 degree angle into the subcutaneous tissue and then you don't retract and we just inject Sometimes these will sting. The patient will tell you that it will sting. And that's it. Pull the needle out, and then you're going to engage the safety and drop it in the sharps. What I want to talk about is an IM injection or an intramuscular injection. This is the majority of the shots that you're going to give in clinic or even receive in clinic. So we use antibiotics, most injections that are vaccines. Um, a lot of them are intramuscular. So there's three areas that you can give them. So you can either give it in the deltoid out here and I'll show you how that's done in a second. So like a flu shot, which a lot of us have had, understand how that's done. Um, the outer area of the leg called the vastus lateralis or the area of the upper buttock called the dorsal gluteal. Um, this is given at 90 degrees and you want to use a needle about 22 to 25 gauge. So let me show you first how to do a dorsal gluteal. So you don't, a lot of the choice of where you're going to put the medicine is dependent on how much medicine it is. So you don't want to give a whole bunch of medicine into the deltoid because it's not as big as a muscle as the glute. And so you have to kind of determine what the patient looks like. So like babies, that's why we give the vaccines in the legs instead of in the arms because they're just little. Or say you have a little grandma that needs to get a flu shot and she's got nothing on going on here, you can put it in the leg. If you do the vastus lateralis, so the upper leg, what you'll want to do is you'll want to divide the leg in half and then you're going to go in the outer area. So the vastus lateralis is in more like the 25% area of the lateral aspect of the leg. Okay, And if you do give any shots that you give, you want to make sure that that side is not firm, that side is in the area where the last injection was. So you got to you want to feel around, particularly like with insulin, you want to feel around and find the area that's soft and then clean it really well. So let me show you the dorsal gluteal. What you'll actually do, let me show you my patient here, is you'll take the buttock and you'll divide it into four sections. So you'll find that there's information about finding the ASIS and drawing a line from the top of the crest to the outer um, greater trochanter, but I sometimes get myself confused on that and it's easier for me just to divide the buttock into four sections. So if you divide into four sections and then you're gonna go in the upper outer area. So if this is my area here, again, not right in the center, remember the sciatic nerves goes through the middle so you don't wanna hit that at all. So you wanna go in this outer quadrant and then you just wanna go right about here. So how you'll do it is again, we're gonna draw this up. So clean off the top. and turn your bottle upside down, enter your needle. You're gonna retract however much you need. Take out the bubbles, take off the needle and exchange for a new one. So you wanna use at least an inch on this area. If you have someone that's got a lot of tissue, sometimes you might even need an inch and a half. So double check what you've got and make sure that there's no bubbles in it. So I always have the patient um, relax their leg. And so you don't want their, their buttock, even if it's their arm, you don't want it to be tense. So I'll have the patient lean over the crust of the table and then I'll have her just relax this leg here. And you should be prepared with um, your gauze as well when you're done. So we just kind of expose the top of her buttock here. Remember, we've divided it, divided it into four. And it's funny because women, all I need is this area here. You know, men will often drop their pants and I don't need the whole thing. All I need is this little area here. 
we're gonna clean it off really well, three to five seconds, and anytime you inject something that is a good amount of medicine, you wanna make sure that you use a Z-Track. So a Z-Track is used to keep the medicine from coming out. So if you can think of the tissue, and now I've punctured that tissue, and if I put two or three mils of medicine in there, that medicine just can come right out. We often see that in testosterone, because testosterone is very thick. And so we want that medicine in the body. We don't want that medicine to be coming out and soaking a gauze or a band-aid that we're gonna apply. And so to do a Z-Track, we actually are gonna pull the tissue down a little bit before we inject, and as we inject, I usually will turn my needle just slightly. So I go in 90 degrees and kind of turn, and then I release the tissue, inject the medicine, and now it creates this Z-Track, so the medicine actually would have to come up against gravity to get out. So, again, this nice and clean, and then pull the top off. So I'm gonna pull the tissue down, I'm actually going to inject in and then release the medicine in. And then when I pull out and release the tissue, the medicine will all stay within there. And then you put engage your safety. So the last thing I want to show you is how to inject into the deltoid. So this is probably the most common one you're going to do, like for flu shots and different things like that. So what you'll do is have that arm exposed. And so it's a lot about anatomy. And so sometimes if it's given incorrectly, you can actually cause a bursitis. So what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna find the tip of the acromion, which is that bony prominence that sticks out there. Typically we'll have the patient kind of extend their arm out a little bit, but because it delineates that, that muscle. So what I'll have is have them put it on their hip, but you want it to be relaxed. So see how when he pulled his arm out, see how you can easily see where the edge of that deltoid is? Imagine a triangle like this. So it comes across and then comes up like this. So you can see how this is um, outlined right here. So you find the tip of the acromion and then you go about three finger widths down and then you inject right there, and that's in the center of the deltoid. So what happens often is people go way too high, and there's a bursa, right, that sits under the acromion, and so if you inject into that bursa, it causes bursitis, the patient will come back in a couple days, and it'll be red, and it'll be angry, it's because of what we did. The medicine still gets into the body, but it can cause a secondary infection. So have the patient relax their arm, bend it up just a little bit, rest it on their arm, or rest on their leg, you can see the triangle that is created. Go three finger widths down and then 90 degrees in like that. So that's how to give a shot, how to get a shot. Um, hopefully you learned something from it. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and um, shoot us an email. Thanks for watching.